You ready? Um, hey, let me open this. And don't look at the cards yet, Olivia. I know, I know, I saw the pink bar. You were the one that told me she even looked past it once, but I hadn't, because I follow the rules. Or I cover up well enough that nobody knows I didn't. <laughs> Black mage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need one, so. What do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh lordy! Yeah, it's gonna it be a funny, fun... and you both know it. Oh, I love it! Are you kidding? That's gold. <laughs> yeah, black mage. Yeah, it's live on the. Welcome to Encyclopedia Command Erica, the segment where we go to the Gatherer website, or in this case, Scryfall website, and click random card over and over, and then we talk about how we would or would not use those cards in Commander. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even that good of a British accent! What was, it was that? stuffy! I'm yelling because I have the music playing, but <laughs> basically it was stuffy. So the, the next line, we're we're missing the lines. Uh, eventually, after the heat death of our solar system, <laughs> or the gravitational decay of the known universe, we'll have talked about every single Magic the Gathering card in a commander context. <laughs> Indeed, we will have. So uh, <laughs> it means a lot of so walls. So here's how to help the show. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So, uh, viewers and listeners, we are doing an encyclopedia effectively live. Uh, this is uh, Phil, of course. And uh, Shivam. And to be fair, all of our podcasts are recorded live. Well, how else would you report a well, podcast? Well, we're, we're live streaming this one. That's the thing. Well, fair. And, and, and then I'm, I'm, I'm a guest host yeah, again, Olivia yeah. Gobert-Hicks. Hey. Yeah. Hey, look, she keeps coming back. <laughs> yeah, I Did, keep getting the I keep getting text messages at like you know, the middle of the day Tuesday. Hey, what are you up to tomorrow night? <laughs> hey, you want to hang it's out? Such a salacious text at like two in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. so what's up tomorrow at nine o'clock? Hey, <laughs> what a podcast? Yeah, hey, what are you doing? You want a podcast with us? <laughs> Let me complain about your audio settings. Bill, I thought first. I was your only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're both funny there. You're both funny there. <laughs> yeah. And uh listeners slash viewers, uh we did set up earlier and uh it was one of those like we were trying to figure out, uh oh, what just happened there? <laughs> uh <laughs> hello everybody. We're learning this technology almost live as we speak. Um yeah, so this is uh Encyclopedia. This is episode 165. It's Encyclopedia um 14 14 i was distracted by olivia um straightening her camera and uh focus yeah. up phil come on sorry i can't it's it's impossible um <laughs> if, so uh thank you for coming to join us uh this episode and we really do appreciate it if you want to support the show by all means please share it with your friends tell everybody that you know about it because the more people who know about it the more people we get to talk to i guess uh yeah and we like doing that some of us uh may might be going to calgary and maybe want to talk to a couple of fans when they show up in calgary yeah um all four of them we are very cold either very cold yes. fans listen listeners if you're from calgary or in calgary right now please be sure to text us tweet us i mean at uh commander and mtg <laughs> text us. uh or uh and and we will we will be sure to respond but let us know you yeah, don't text us because you don't have our phone numbers i we hope and uh definitely let us know though that you're in calgary and go visit olivia when she's there next week Yay. or whenever it is when are you going to be there i fly out tomorrow oh so like three days from now they better get on this uh-huh <laughs> um and of course or like if a week before you guys heard this for those right. of you listening at home <laughs> like well for, it was great meeting all of you in calgary yeah cheers yeah. guys yeah for those of you tuning in after gp calgary or whatever it is um olivia really enjoyed 
that time she had a great time a um, great time so uh she'll be cosplaying there and be sure to check her out um visit her i mean and say hi and people you you enjoy it when people come up to you and they're like hey are you olivia gobert hicks gobert hicks gobert hicks is the other gobert hicks um so if, if uh, you also want to uh, go the extra mile and support the show, you can join our patrons, some of whom are in our Twitch uh, chat live right now, um, and uh, saying hi to us. And there's Andy Bentley and Taya Steer and uh, a few other folks. Oh, and there's Callie Film Girl. So uh, come, up, come on to our Patreon at patreon.com slash commander and MTG. Or donate to us at commanderandmtg.com slash donations. That's it. I had to remember that. Or you can still go to the GoFundMe and donate. And uh, only really crazy people are donating at that GoFundMe. Andy, I'm talking to you again. Um, so Specifically to you. <laughs> yep. And uh, so uh, Andy is going to get his own show uh, pretty soon. It's going to be awesome. Um, so today we're doing an encyclopedia. And for those of you who have never seen our encyclopedia show uh well no one has actually seen our encyclopedia show i mean i have were you waving (laughs) olivia um yes i was i've never seen one so uh so olivia what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna look at 15 cards from anywhere in magic's history and talk about it in the context of commander and uh and you uh haven't seen these cards yet which is pretty awesome and even Shivam hasn't seen these cards because I was up until 2 a.m. populating this, like, no joke. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's going to be brand new and we're going to get fresh evaluations. I don't even remember what the cards were. Again, it was like 2 a.m. Who knows what was going on? Um, <laughs> and to be honest, this really is one of my favorite things to do because uh, I don't know if you all noticed, but I'm into random things. And uh, uh, having Cheers a bunch of random cards and look at them and be like, what do we do with this? is one of my favorite things to do about Commander. So I am I kind of love this show. Like the in the fastest segue, Shivam, you need to come up and visit in Reno. Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, but... But like... Then he would, hmm? he would end up uh, shooting a man just to watch him die. Maybe, <clears throat> but it would be after he went through like my 100,000 cards and got to be like, whoa, check this out. We could put this in this deck. So I kind of want to witness that first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That yeah, okay. that does remind me that I am overdue for having a card sorting party at my house, so folks can come over and handle. Because this is yes. not that that that's not the thing that Shivam does. Shivam is okay with looking through your cards, but when it comes to sorting, that is somebody else's problem. <laughs> like I am, that is not that is not a thing that is happening here. I I made a deal with someone at work, um, and we just have to actually execute it. Um, but the deal is, I get. Uh, his magic collection and all I have to do is remove all of the boxes from his apartment that he still hasn't unpacked from moving in a year and a half ago so uh, <laughs> um, and then and then I get 10,000 magic cards um, actually no he has four 10,000 count boxes I think is the way it works and um, so then we'll go through those magic cards basically and that'll be like that'll be my year I suppose that's a lot. Yeah. So before we get to our 15 random cards, a word from our sponsors. That's right. Our Patroni, some of whom are with us, like we said earlier. Um, but each week we like to call out three. Oh, boy. Uh, our stream just heard my Windows virus protection alert. Sorry, everybody. Um, Windows 10. I can't stop. It actually well. didn't come through, Phil. It didn't? No. Awesome. That's great. Oh, maybe the encyclopedia theme song didn't, but who knows? It'll go through and post. Um, well, so, I definitely heard the theme song for that. But. Oh, cool. So each week we like to call out three of our Patroni. And uh, this week we're calling out uh, a longtime friend uh, who we've known for actual years. Sorry, as things fall around me because my room is jury rigged. Um, <laughs> Jesse Durant, who is from Australia. Yay. Can either Yay. of you do an Australian accent? We've done multiple No, Australian. I refuse. All right. Not even for some shrimp on the... No. Okay. Also, Kenji. Kenji Y. That's on knife. Uh, Kenji. This is a knife. <laughs> is that... 
crocodile uh, butt there. <laughs> I watched that movie more than any other movie I've ever seen because it was the only videotape we had at my grandma's house. Oh. So I've seen Crocodile Dundee like 700 times. Yeah, yeah. So you you can actually do lines from the movie. Or lines of cocaine like they do in the movie. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee 2. I didn't see that. <laughs> or maybe I did, and either way it sounds terrible. Kenji, <laughs> Kenji Y is our second one, and uh, Kenji... Uh, did not supply a last name, so I'm not going to read it out. But we have played with him, and we're on Twitter with him all the all the time. I actually and met with him at uh, GDC. We got to play a game of Commander together, cool. and it was fantastic. Oh. He's a really fun guy, and it was uh, really great hanging out. Yeah, uh, he was. I think he was one of the guys playing the dungeon um, deck, which we'll end up talking to. Uh, Sean you got Patchen to play about, about that. Yeah, 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 I got to. He tried out a new uh, everybody votes politic group hug deck on me, and it was super fun. Oh my! It was super fun. So gross. May, yeah. So Kenji, I'll be in touch, and we'll see if uh, we we can modify our group hug decks. And then Mark Manuel, uh, we don't uh, know Mark personally. We have never played Magic with him, but thank you very much for donating, and we do appreciate it. And so remember that new patrons, uh, we do this funny name game where every month or two or six or so we read out all of our top lifetime donations. Uh, <laughs> our, our top lifetime uh, donators and uh, we encourage them to change their name to something silly uh, I think we had uh, one of the, the, the ones last time was Andy Shivam is my spirit animal Bentley um, uh, don't just, do that one again Andy I, I'm just saying what he did he's got something different this time um, and new patrons, before you join or as you join Patreon, you can change your name to anything you want and we'll read it out loud. Now, the fun part is when you're listening to other podcasts that our patrons are on, when they ask questions, because then you get to hear them use the names that they changed for us. Yeah. Because uh, our dear beloved Andy is also a patron of um, a Talarian. show called Limited Resources, where they were asking uh, questions of a, another guest that they had. And they read out his name, and it was definitely a name that had been tinkered with for <laughs> our purposes. Yeah. And that made me laugh so yeah. much. And I was probably the only listener who got that, and that made me very happy. <laughs> the um, <laughs> the uh, Talarian Community College also, uh, the professor puts up a uh, uh, an image of all of the top patrons of his show. And uh, Andy is one of, no surprise, one of his patrons. And... Um, so with it, for a long time, it's like, he, you know how the professor divides it into three columns? Andy's name stretched across the bottom. like, <laughs> and, and, it, and it was Shiva is my spirit awesome. animal. So, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, if, if you haven't seen that, uh, it's worth it. I, I, I looked for it in uh, the most recent TCC, uh, like his biggest regrets, which, by the way, is a fantastic video. If you haven't seen that already, go take a look at that. Um. Not that not that he needs any promotional help from us. I'm just saying it was a really, really good, good piece of content. Yeah, if you haven't heard of Oh I Don't Know, the professor, maybe check him out. <laughs> yeah. And and there's a small video called Game Nights, by the way. Right? <laughs> like, I mean, they're not wouldn't know anything really... about it. Yeah. Olivia's actually been on Game Nights. I have. Yeah. Um Right. So <laughs> Then uh, still still teasing before we uh, move on. So any CAG news? Probably not. But as it happens, as it happens, um, Sheldon Menery actually went live this week on the twenty first of March. So I guess that was last week when we we're recording with the CAG um, charter, the charter for the Commander Advisory Group. He went live on his uh, Star City Games page, and he's got a column that he puts out at Star City like every week, and in there. Uh, he laid out and discussed what the CAG is for, kind of what the rules are that bind us and what we're supposed to be doing. And it was right. a really interesting article because it also had his kind of editorial comments about, here's the legal text. Here's the text that I think what it means and why. And so in short, the idea of the commander advisory group, as we've already talked about many times, is to act both as like a specialized advisor to know the format really well that can bring up suggestions of topics and things and comment on ideas that the rules committee has and then theoretically 
were something to happen, if a space were to open up, we could possibly be moved up. But that's kind of like a, we're putting this just on the off chance. It's not going to happen. Chill out. Um, and also, well, it's kind we of are, like, we're all human. Most of us. Well, I mean, the, theoretically, um, I, <laughs> I make no claims to your identity. Um, but one of the important things, though, is that it also lays out like that the CAG is not allowed to make any financial or trades based upon anything we hear in there, which is really important for the fans to be able to have any modicum of trust in what we do, right? That's right. Because right. already as like podcasters and stuff, we've already kind of got this weird extra layer of knowing extra stuff. But when you're on the like rules committee level and you're like, oh, well, next week we're banning Soul Ring, then you know, we could capitalize For on example. And as long as I am anywhere near <laughs> there, Soul Ring will never you through be the banned. screen. <laughs> like, I am Soul Ring's number be. one fan is literally never going to happen. So... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but, so we'll... But? Oh, yeah. So, and, yeah, and I was also going to say, uh, we've been having some interesting discussions about the band list. Now, I'm not going to mention exactly what we're doing, but one thing is that a lot of the CAG members, myself included, lean more heavily towards the unbanned side than the banned side. As in, we're like, hey, look, there's a bunch of cards here that should have been banned when you banned them like 15 years ago that are maybe not like, like I don't think Biorhythm is the strongest card in the world and probably doesn't need to be on the banned list. Painter Servant, well, maybe. Yeah. And since the game's changed since then, and there's all kinds of other like, things that maybe serve as answers to it, maybe they right. don't need I mean, to Right. I mean, think about it. It's like, time. is any of these cards, are any of these cards stronger than Narset with Nexus of Fate or something? Probably not. Right. right? So there's, it's well, interesting because we get to bring a whole new kind of perspective on cards that have just right. been sitting there on the band list for a hundred years that nobody's well, thought about. Well, and so many people were worried about like Protean Hulk and then nothing really happened when that one got unbanned well if you're like a at least in at least in my at least yeah, in the metas in, i've played in, in i have normally, i've yet to yes. i've never fair i've not seen that card out in the wild like at all it turns out Which that in doesn't competitive mean edh they really really like them some pr uh, protein hulks but i mean cdh is different <laughs> their, their game is different what do you want uh, it's a different format i mean honestly but yeah no it's been actually really interesting like the main things we've been talking about like, we had a discussion about whether Planeswalkers should be uh, commanders or not. Uh, we had a discussion about what should be on the band list. Yeah. Um, and we had, like, I mean, it's just been really interesting yeah. just kind of feeling everybody out and seeing where we stand. Yeah. Like, Josh is much more on the let's unban the whole universe. And I, and like, I'm more like, we need to get rid of Dead Eye Navigator and Iona and Sol Ring. But, I don't know. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, the rules committee has not made any judgments one way or the other. They're just kind of listening to us and watching and giggling because they're like, ha ha, we had these discussions 25 years ago. And I'm like, yeah, well, we didn't. <laughs> All right. Um, well, when uh, when you have uh, something that you want to ask uh, our listeners, we'll be sure to bring it up because we're going to make this a regular question on the, the show. Um, yeah. And if any listeners do have anything any concerns or uh, topics that you want to bring up to the rules committee, feel free to hit me up and let me know because the rules committee does listen and yep. they're super interested in finding out what you have to say. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I am definitely uh, enjoying being able to take a stand for the most maligned card in magic soul ring. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. If Not it's enough. Most soul rings in this game. People just keep ignoring it. Nobody ever uses it. Yeah. Um, Okay, so uh, we have to move on. We do have a uh, for the rest of the show to talk about. Um, so Sunday, April 7th, we're going to be back excited. at the Dragon and Meeple, um, where I'll be hosting a commander event. The entry is it's going to be at noon, and it'll go to like four or five or so. It's a little bit more casual and uh, less time constrained. Um, the, it'll be noon to five. It's a $5 entry if you pre-register, and we'll have a pre-registration link up before the event. Obviously, he has to provide that. And um, he being Chris, the uh, owner of the Dragon and Meeple. And uh, it's seven fifty at the door. So uh, that covers your table for the entire time of the event. And, of course, you can order some delicious food there because we have now had the food 
It is fantastic. It's oh, so fantastic. the kitchen is now open? Oh yeah, the kitchen was open the next week. I went to um, I went to their soft opening uh, the the following week after our commander event. It was fantastic. Um, yeah, so be on the lookout for that. It'll be awesome. Now, uh, Olivia, you're going to Calgary. Olivia. Ooh, looks like she froze. Yeah. Well, look at that. Well, Olivia's going to Calgary, and she was talking about. Um, and she froze preemptively. <laughs> some yeah, she froze preemptively. Um, let me just text her. In this case, I'm not texting her uh, that she's bumping the mic. Uh, hi, you froze. Um, okay. And, uh, she'll be at Calgary, uh, this weekend. So if you're catching this on the live stream or right after we put it up on YouTube, there it is. Um, and, uh, just to be clear, this is, um, another streaming test. And this time we're going to try to add a little bit more. I'm experimenting with, uh, the controls for actually increasing, sorry, or actually displaying the, um, uh, sorry, she can hear us, um, for actually displaying the images. So, is she rejoining us? Let's see. Maybe her computer overheated. Hmm. I'm going to have to put um, sound baffling. So here's one of the things. Oh, let me duck down here, listeners. This is called vamping once again while our guest host... I mean, I could tell more CAG stories. <laughs> um, in the background, you can see a little bit of this foam. This is sound retardant foam, Shivam, that I put up on all the walls. Um, and there's a wall over here that I realized I hadn't put it up on. Um, yeah, tell us a CAG story then. Actually, and, uh, Phil, here's a question for you. Oh, okay. What do you think about Band as Commander? Like oh, the idea yeah. of like, you know how they used to have like, you can't play Rafellas or uh, Braids as your commander, but you can have it in the 99? No, I, I like the straight up ban list. It's much simpler. Um, you think? Also because the uh, the secret, um, the idea of a secret commander, like when Josh uh, plays his five color Nekasar deck, right? It's too easy to uh, get your secret commander out. And if that secret commander is like Leovold or something hideous like that. Um, then you just tutor for that and then protect it and you create a shield around that commander and it's, mm. you've effectively got the same problem. So, I mean, if a card is so bad that it shouldn't be a commander, it shouldn't be in commander, right? Uh, because again, just too easy to pull out, protect, and then you've got the Leovold situation all over again. Yeah. I think that's where the, uh, rules committee is. Like we were just kind of, I was just like floating the idea, like, because I really want to play Rafellos again, but a team to having infinite mana is pretty broken. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, you don't... I mean... I, I went <laughs> I went through a, a period in my first meta where we played with some banned cards. And, uh, and every one of them, it was like, yeah, this is banned for a reason. This was actually before Profit, um, but uh, it was not very long after that that Profit was banned. So... Hmm. Um, I mean, these are like those banned cards are banned for a reason. Like, uh, Biorhythm should not be unbanned, frankly. Why am I the only one on the stream right now? Well, it's because you're looking at me and I'm looking at you. Um, but Olivia dropped. How is it that everything is fine until we start to stream? I don't know, Olivia. Can you hear us? <laughs> oh, boy. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to move on with the show then. Okay, and, well, uh, I guess, I mean, there's got to be a way for us to be able to have uh, two people on the stream at the same time, because if it is a Shivam show, then I've got a lot of things to talk about. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's not the Shivam show. Um, well, no, that's what the guys in the uh, the folks in the Twitch chat are saying, because all they can see. Oh is yeah, me. I see it. I see it. That's what I was asking. I pulled up OBS. There's a real lag too. Yeah, I don't understand. There wasn't the lag there before. Why is that happening? Why can't we show both at the same time? Like, I feel like other people can. But in the meantime, here is a sheep token. (laughs) 
That's hysterical. Yep. So uh, this is actually what we're doing right now. The, it is so now the, we're looking at your uh, entire Discord chat. Yeah. Which is just our chat. Oh, look, you got Paula in there. Yeah, it's right behind me. All right. It was showing both earlier. Um, that's why I was like, no, it's not. It's not happening. Let's uh, let's try to add. Let's try to add her. Um, I got an idea. Whoops. Oh, no, that's what's happening. All right, so let me turn this off. Right there. Now I can start doing secret stuff on Discord. This is very entertaining for our our people. Well, I mean, it is a test stream. Yeah. Fight to the death. What is fight to the death? Fight to the death. Uh, red and white instant. Uh, destroy all blocking creatures and all blocked creatures. Hmm. That seems like a really great idea in a goad deck. Like if you have... Um, if you force two people to, to brawl with each other, fight amongst yourselves, and then just smash and smash, smash. Fight to the death? Is that something that they posted in the... Uh... No. Uh, Elevarius was like, check this card out. So I did. Yeah, that's what I just asked, if that's something they posted in there. Yes, they did. They posted it in the chat. Um, yeah, no, it's that looks really cool, actually. Um, that looks super fun. For when other people are Fight fighting. Wow, that team is really neat. I like that a lot. Um, all right. So let's see. What other CAG stories do I got? Um, what can I talk about? Uh, yeah, that is a pretty cool card. I personally wanted to unban all the power, but uh, I was laughed out of the room. Because, like, I think it would have been super neat to just be able to have, um, you know, it's like, if you got a Mox, where else are you going to use it? Nobody, it's not like we actually play Highlander or anything like that. So, um, I mean, not that I have any power, but uh, I don't know. I just thought it would be interesting. Like, I'm, I'm of the opinion that people should be able to play the cards that they own. And, uh, but also I understand that people are very abusive of cards and make hyper broken decks. So, so not everybody quite as aggressively fair as I am. Uh, so there've been learning lessons. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, so everything seems to have failed right now. Everything. So, what do you think about gold bordered cards? Should people um, be allowed to use them? I think at this point they should be. Most of those gold border cards are pretty expensive. So, mm. um, I mean, it's like, you know, sure, a grim monolith in gold border is only $20, right? Which is still really ridiculous. Now, they're fancy proxies ultimately. So, what does it matter? Um, I, I mean, they I, were officially released proxies, is my opinion. Well, yeah, like, yeah, that, that's fa yeah, they're fancy proxies, right? Sure. So, I don't, I don't really see if your meta is comfortable with you writing on cardboard or printing something out and sleeving it with a basic mountain behind it or anything like that. Then there's no reason they should ever raise an eyebrow with a gold border. Although I confess, when I played with a gold border, I felt a little bit weird. Like. Because I have a gold bordered um, cradle and a gold bordered uh, grim monolith. Yeah. And I mean, look, I've got a real cradle. I just don't want to use it in a real deck. Like, and I don't know. I, I was like, after playing with people's Highlander decks, I realized that my gold bordered cards are effectively still magic cards. And it's not like I've been, you know, making my own card. Like, they put it out. It's got yeah. a magic back. That's good enough for me. Yeah. And, <laughs> uh, um, and uh, there, there are some people um, 
who don't think you should what, what was i gonna where was i going with that oh um well the gold border actually broke the reserve list right that was um one of the things that they had to retroactively say they would never do again because they did print a bunch oh. of uh power as gold border and um did they i don't remember that but yeah. uh i trust you yeah and uh and and that that made the people who were proponents of the reserve list um super upset so well yeah. i don't have a lot of nice things to say about those people so uh great yeah yeah neither of us is pro uh res- reserve list no oh i see what you mean i didn't realize that i'd forgotten that there was a collector's edition that had been printed with the square borders yeah right um what were you talking about i th- i was talking about the uh the gold border ones or the ones that were printed out like the world championship decks or whatever they also printed reserve list cards like obviously yeah. monolith and cradle yeah uh, that's, that's what i'm talking about yeah power was actually uh printed there was the collector edition that was done oh yeah that was like the entire set of alpha with full square square cut borders oh but they those things do- are also they didn't do a championship series. The um... yeah, I guess they didn't. That's right. I'm I'm thinking back. I don't I don't know it very well. So let's see. Yeah. So yeah. So sorry, viewers and listeners. We're coordinating with Olivia to get her in. Add friends to DM. She's not showing up. She's in the I know. chat. So she has to join? What's happened here? We can see you, Shiva. Let's see. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, sorry, everybody. It's okay. Ah. It's a test of the emergency broadcast system. And here, this is, uh, she's, we're trying to load her. What happened? She says it's 100% Discord. I don't know what that means. Uh, oh, oh, something's happening. There we actually she. have her. Okay. Oh, we Yay, hear her. She's back. Yay, I know I've got voice. I'm, li- I had to connect through my phone, so I'm making this work. Wow. Yeah. I'm all about this. Here, You're sideways. My camera's going to be way different. Uh, okay, is it sideways? All right, I'll fix it then. Yeah. Woohoo, there you are. That's... Wow, you... Through your phone? Through my phone. That's It's baller. still loading on my laptop right now, but my phone is perfectly fine. So here wow. we go. And you don't know what it's happened? Nice. No. It literally just, you guys stopped mid-sentence, and then everything started spinning. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So the internet never changed, never turned off. Nothing ever happened. As far as I've been connected this entire time, Discord just absolutely decided to give up. Mm-hmm. So I just, <laughs> I closed it. I left Audacity running. And then I opened it up again, and it said downloading updates, one of one. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So it downloaded it, it installed it, it read its thing, and it did that like 20 times, and right now it's still trying to connect. So here we are. Let's do this. But (laughs) the fact that you're on your phone is actually pretty rad, because that looks great. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And it sounds fine. Excellent. (laughs) There's some some visual distortion there, but that's all right. We can Um, deal. Yeah, we can deal. So card number one, Kazandu oh, can... Tuskcaller. <laughs> the hell is this? Kazandu Tuskcaller oh. for one and a green. You get a creature human shaman that has the ability level up. For one and a green, okay. you put a level counter on this, and you can only level up as a sorcery. So it's not a mana sink at the end of your opponent's turn. Remember that. So okay. at level one, which is the base card, uh, it's uh, a one one, and uh, you have to put the level counter on it. Remember, 
So you have to pay one and a green to get it to level one to... as well. Okay. And then one and a green uh, makes it level two. And from level two to five, you can create, you can tap it to create a three, three green elephant creature token. Wow. And then when it's, when it's level six or more, you can create two three, three green elephant creature tokens by tapping them. That's actually kind of awesome. Like... It, it seems I'm pretty good. I'm still trying to wrap it? my head around it. Yeah. Think about it. So basically, on turn one or two, or turn two, you put it out, right? And um, then on turn three, you can put a level counter on it, and then mm -hmm. tap it to immediately create a three three. Right. Right. And then it's on turn terrible. four, you can put a doubling season and tap it to create two three threes. And then turn or five, or be playing Celestia and have anointed procession. Wait, say that again. I said, or you could be playing Celestia and have an anointed procession. You could. And populate. And yep, like, that too. Um, Tristani. And, oh, God, I like this. This card is great. Like, okay. I would, so, I mean, it seems really weak and will die to anything, but also yeah. seems like exactly the kind of dirtle nonsense that I'm into. Yeah, because it never becomes and if you're anything. Playing commander. Oh, go ahead. No, go on. I was going to say, and if you're playing commander, like how many options do you have of protecting things? Like that's not actually that hard. We've run so much equipment or like weird, you know, board state manip that we could probably keep it around. Yeah. Um, uh, to quote the commander's brew, counterpoint. Um, the uh, So for the low, low cost of six mana, you can have a one, one that you can tap to generate a three, three elephant. And for the low, low cost of 14 mana, you can have a 1-1 one, one you can tap for two 3-3 three, three elephants. But it's not 14 mana all at once. That's right. It will take you several yeah. turns to get there. What else do you do on turn one or two? Not a lot. I mean, yeah, it's a good way to kind of throw anything that you can't use at something. I mean, if your commander game is low power enough, you can get away with this. And uh, I forget, does this start at level zero or level one? Uh, it starts at zero. Yeah. You have to put a level. You have to, It only counts as level two when it has two level counters on it. Well, you put one level counter on it and then you proliferate because you're running a Traxa. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, if you're aided by proliferation, um, <laughs> then. I like it. Sure. I mean, maybe. Maybe there's a cheaper way to do it than 14 mana. And, uh, but boy, if, if, but if you have a pro, uh, uh, anointed procession or, and parallel lives and a doubling season, how about that? It's that's worth a it like herd of elephants, my dude. <laughs> that's 16 that's elephants an, with that's a tap. Easy. Yeah, that's easy. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so, uh, I've actually used this card in Commander and, um, uh, at the time, I should give it another shot because at the time I was playing with a pretty twisted... My first meta was really... It broke me. It left me a scarred human being. Um, so much has truly, been explained my heart just by knowing you. that. So much is explained, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, let's move on to the next one. Can I look at it on the show notes now? Yeah, you can now look at everything on the show notes. Not okay. everything. The, the cards as we get to them. All right, okay. so, this one's uh, Mind Read? Yeah, go ahead. All right. This is uh, Last Caress, as covered by Metallica. I got <laughs> up to say. Um, let's see. So that's uh, a sorcery from, uh, it looks like Apocalypse, uh, for two and a black. That's a target player loses one life. You gain one life you didn't and draw say, a card. You didn't say the mana cost. For the low, low cost of two and a black. You get target target player loses one life and you gain one life. Draw a card. And draw a card. Now, you know, pass. I mean, <laughs> I see three to run a Sanguine Blood infinite combo. Yeah. yeah I, I guess. mean, I see three to kill someone instantly is what I see if I'm playing black, which I do. I mean, fair. <laughs> Sure. I, think, I, I just think I that mean, for three I've mana, seen cards you can... that you 
But I've seen draw a card for three, and this is a, a life gain, life loss, so how many cards in black mess around with life totals and could do something extra with that? The cost is high, and maybe it's like, uh, not high, I mean, it's just, it's meh. I see utility to it, but it's not like an auto-include in every black deck I have. I'm just saying that you could probably get drain for one, like, 90 million ways. Yeah. For cheaper than three? I mean, isn't that just you like extort cost on any card? True. Like which is white black, yeah. Yeah, I mean you are playing. I wine don't disagree. Obedience. I think it would be perfect if it was instant and not sorcery. Then I wouldn't bat And cost like it. one and not three. <laughs> well, it's the draw card that's not gonna let it cost one. You don't get the draw card for one. Fair. Like right. this is basically cycle uh cycle this card and also do an incidental point of damage to somebody. Sure. So, uh, Olivia, you want to do card number three? I do. <laughs> <laughs> card number three. Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. Counter spell. Blue what? to blue. Counter target spell. I have never heard I of this card like before. I feel like personally, this card is absolutely useless in Commander and has no place in the format. <laughs> this card's great. What? What? Who, if you're running yeah. blue, why aren't you running counter spell? Because uh, you have a soul. No, you don't. You're playing blue. We already know that's not a thing. <laughs> oh, that's true. No, believe it or not, there are ways to play blue that don't involve countering everything and being the permission person at the table. I, I know. That's what Brea does. It just gives me did I navigator and makes me draw cards and stuff. I get it. <laughs> I mean, look, in my uh, zombie deck, in my uh, Grim Grin deck, like, I have like three blue cards. One of them is just straight up Ice Age Counterspell. I mean, it's Counterspell. Yeah. It's Counterspell. It's Counterspell. So you yeah, always... We... Plus, the nice thing is, like, once somebody plays this, they're done. Because it's Commander, you can only have it once. Like, you're going to watch them pull it back from the graveyard if that's yeah. something they're going to do. But otherwise, like, that's it. Okay, and, Counterspell's gone. So. And, <laughs> and as we know, there are no other two mana Counterspells uh, that see any play Not at a all. one. No, and, uh, not a one. And like there's said, no way to recur it, it's these. over. Yep. No. Although, when somebody snaps Did a counter spell back, Was he listening? Because I'm pretty sure bad. I just said you can recur it. <laughs> oh, is that what you said? <laughs> yes! I, I, so, Shivan was talking at the same time, so I couldn't. Oh, okay. Remember, so, <laughs> so um, yeah. So, you can snap caster it, I guess. Right? Is that yep. what you were saying? Well, there's all the... And, well, with jump starts, the only the cards with jump start on them. But, yeah, there's stuff you can pull out all the time. A bunch of the, like, Grixis wizards have stuff like that with instants and sorceries and graveyards. Huh. Do you play Jumpstart cards? Not personally, but I've played enough limited that I know they exist and yeah. I hate them because they always get played against me. <laughs> true, true. I mean, um, I would probably run something like Memory Lapse or Arcane Denial or... I mean, let's be real. It's Counterspell. If you're going to run Counterspell, you know you're going to run Counterspell. Yeah, you start with Counterspell. <sighs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you build from there. Yeah. And, and Swan Song. You? It's Counterspell. Right? Anyways, yeah. all right. Counter spell. So, you know if you want it. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, card number three, four. ingot. In card number four. You're right. I lost track because I was looking at the uh, the stream display. Ingot chewer for four and a red. You get a three three creature elemental. When Ooh. ingot chewer enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact, and it has I an don't evoke. Care cost. for him. <laughs> And it has an evoke cost, which says <laughs> of one red, just red. Uh, you may cast the spell for its evoke cost. If you do, it's sacrificed when it enters the battlefield. Now, remember, that's don't a triggered effect. You don't like that? Don't care for it, no. Oh. Ingatur, Vintage All-Star, Legacy All-Star. One of the I great units of like, don't artifact care destruction. For it. This card is hella good. Like, oh, it's, it's amazing. I hate it. Straight up good. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Andy Bentley likes it, so uh, I guess I guess we're Well, okay. good for Andy. <laughs> yeah. They, they, one thing I want to point out, and I try to point this out every time we talk about evoke cards, which is apparently like once every two years or so. Uh, remember that this is a triggered ability, so that when 
you uh, play it for its evoke cost. It enters the battlefield. It's a creature. So if you have Perforos out or Aura Shards, it's a creature. And now it has a triggered ability. You have to sacrifice it. So if you have some way to blink it back to your hand, or sorry, bounce it back to your hand or blink it, or uh, sacrifice it for some other profitable ability, you can do that. You have the time to do it. So. And like, it's great for death triggers. It's great for... Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I love evoke cards, especially in Commander, because there's such a wide yeah. array of things that were never meant to interact with evoke that we use all the time that can be just great things. And there's so many ways for them to interact. Yeah, like you're saying, like there's so many ways for them to interact with stuff that they never saw in their home set or in any other format that can be broken, make you an awesome combo, or just a ridiculous one. Yeah, yeah. But Inga as Chua, someone who has real, a brain deck, I don't I just care hate for this the card. name. Um, so yeah, it's great. Yeah, we have to it's we have to try not it. to talk over each other, folks. And uh, sorry, it, it'll be, we'll each be a lot more audible if we take turns. Um, sure. So uh, right. So say, somebody want to say whatever they were saying? Yeah. So I hate the name Ingature because it's just a set of sounds that really grates my my synesthetic ears. I can't handle that. It's just sloppy and gross sounding, and I'm just like, ooh. But it's a really good card. How do you feel about Dark Steel Ingot? I think it's if you put that in your deck, you better have a good reason. But the name is fine. It's because okay. Ingot plus Chewer together is just a weird, wet sounding word. Olivia actually has an entire stream where she does nothing but chew ingots. Mm-hmm. And that's why I don't. <laughs> well, you get the next one. Card number five. Emerald Gear Smasher. For two and a red, a human warrior from uh, Aether Revolt, a 2-3 that goes right along with Ingature, says tap, sack an artifact, Emerald Gear Smasher deals two damage to each opponent. Each. Oh, it's each. This I have actually used in my Brea deck early on in one of my first builds. You did. To uh, do things like pitch Thopters uh, to just ding the table for two. Mm-hmm. It's great. I like it. It's really, really solid. And um, if you're playing with cards from uh, the current or from the last set, you can even use this to trigger gruel stuff with your, um, oh, yeah. because it does damage, not gruel, um, Rakdos. Like the Rakdos things that were like, do damage to somebody in spectacle cost. What you got? Were you saying something, Olivia? Oh, no, I'm trying to get my camera to focus because it's all oh. out of whack. Sorry. Yeah, no, this guy is, it's fine. It's a common. It's good for like your budget or popper type of builds. But it's actually got surprising amount of utility because especially in decks where you've got a yeah. ton of artifact tokens and things just sitting around, doing two damage to the table is pretty solid. Yeah, that is pretty and if solid. if you're running red. I mean, yeah, but in an artifact deck, like in Sahili, this is good. In Brea, this can be good. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if you've got things where it's like when an artifact goes to the graveyard, if you're running this, for instance, with a Marionette Master, um, which is, uh, let's see, what does that guy do specifically? Well, that's the one where when you sacrifice an artifact, uh, your opponent's When an artifact you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. It's got Fabricate 3, right? Yeah. So with that, if you're doing this, you can ding somebody for 5 and the other people for incidental mm-hmm. 2, which is pretty great. That was one of the com. Uh, that was one of the um, combos that I was thinking about with Brea when I was building this. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this reminds me because I've been re- I'm rebuilding my Brea deck, taking it apart and turning it into Artifact Aristocrats. So we would so... all we would all use this <laughs> in uh, the the right kind of deck. If you need like a redundant sack outlet and you don't have your KCI out. Clark's Clan Ironworks for everybody else. Um, and uh, you don't have something like a Goblin Welder and so on, then this is a, a nice redundant one. Um, yeah, and it's just tough enough to actually survive. Yeah, and this many act, assaults. Man, you're picking good cards. No. Nope. Yeah. Scryfall picked it. Well, Scryfall picked it. Thank you, card. Scryfall. Yeah. So, Olivia, you have the next one. 
<laughs> okay, card number six is she Urza's Mine, 83B. You got to start over and... again because you froze. Oh. Oh, dang it. Okay, I said card number six is Urza's Mine, 83B. <laughs> yep. It is... Tap to add one colorless to your mana pool. If you have the mine, the tower, and the power plant in play at the same time, add two colorless to your mana pool. Cool. Do you Versus use this in Commander? I don't, but I can't imagine why you wouldn't. I mean, well, it would it, work. It gives you a lot of colorless mana. I mean, when your deck is 60 cards and you can put four of each of these... Right, of each of the different then it, types. Yeah, of... well, then it's Tron, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Commander, where you can only put one of each. Discord, why do you hate me so much? I've know. tried to use Urza Tron in my, in my Commander deck, and it's much harder than you think it is. Because uh, they don't come up that often. Turns out. Right. You need to yeah. be able to, I mean, in an Artifact Recursion deck, you could probably do the, um, what's that, what's that, um, the map, Expedition map. Right, in mm -hmm. order to fetch any land. And there are a couple yeah. of other ways to fetch any land, but still. It just, I wanted it to work, yeah. and it doesn't work. It just I doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, so listeners, if you found a way to make this work, be sure to tell us. But uh, until then, we will be skeptical. All right. That's a good word for it. Yeah. All right. So our next one is uh this one is mine right so let me yes sir. Place mm -hmm. it in here and uh what is it card number seven seven blood crypt blood crypt and uh that we all know it's a it's a land that's a swamp mountain it was recently reprinted of course in ravnica allegiance and as blood crypt enters the battlefield you may pay two life if you don't it enters the battlefield tapped strictly worse than a guild gate no. <laughs> I fell for it. Life is a renewable resource. <laughs> I fell for it. They they couldn't see my face. Now they you can. You walked right you in. Got, you got me. You got me. The gates were open. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. But uh, yeah. we've all used this card, and we would all use it again. And in fact, now is the time to pick up as many of these as you can. Um, yes. Because if you don't base. have yeah. full set of all the dual of the shocks, <clears throat> now is there's now. never going to be a better time than right now to get as many as you can. It is true. And but, as it happens, these actually have the best art of the lot, I think. Yeah, they do. They're Except really good. for, uh, I don't like the new uh, Sacred Foundry, but otherwise the rest of them are really, really good. I like the old overgrown tombs. I think they're really pretty. Fair. Those are really pretty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, like, I think the old Howl of is probably better too. New is a little too future for me. <laughs> but otherwise, get them. They're cheap. Yep. So we don't need okay. to... There's a whole cycle. We don't need to say too much about these. And next time we see it come up yeah. in the cycle, in, in the random card search, we'll, uh, we'll be good. But yeah. remember, there's only 10 of these out of the... Uh, I think it's something like 20,000 unique 22, cards 22,000, isn't it? So yeah. So we're not going to see another Shockland for quite some time. Mm -mm. Um, Shocking. All right, so Olivia, you have the next one. I think. I do. No, I do. No, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm going to be nine. That's right, you're threes. Card number eight from uh, Nemesis. It's Spineless Thug. For one and a black, a 2-2 two -two mercenary. Spineless Thug can't block. You know what else it can't do? Get in a commander deck. <laughs> yeah, but That for... is it. You could have a bear with a downside for only two mana now. And it doesn't even have a relevant creature type. <laughs> What's that? Like, sorry, maybe if I'm playing like, you know, Gatherer Zero or something, like this is not a, this is not a card that's going to show up in like, this is one of those cards that you will just be like, why, why does this exist? And it's because limited exists. But it's a card that'll never see play anywhere else again. <laughs> never, never. Not even in a tribal mercenaries deck. Why? 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 I it's... I would rather accidentally play two reassembling skeletons and have my opponent call me out than one spineless thug. <laughs> 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 that is hilarious. Yeah, this card. I mean, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, this is really. Bleep really him! Bad. Bleep him! Look, they can't all be winners. 
And uh, uh, so, yeah, so I guess it's our last card of the evening because uh, we ran a little bit long and had to make some choices. Oh, no. So last Sorry. card is yours, Olivia. All right. Last card is one black for a festering goblin. He's a mm. zombie goblin for one one. When he's put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target creature gets a minus one, minus one until the end of turn. Oh, it's not a counter. Gets minus one, minus one. That's right. It's turn. not even a counter. <laughs> it's not even a counter. That said, this card is awesome. <laughs> like, what? I've played it in a lot of uh, limited and 60 card stuff. You've... It's super good. Okay. And in Commander, it's even good in like Aristocrats type of things. Because incidentally, just offing a one, a, one a one toughness creature, pretty good. Yeah. And it's zombie, so you can come back from the graveyard. And if you got rooftop storm, you can just kind of cycle it and just nuke yeah. people. I've done pretty I mean, silly things with festering goblins. All honestly, time. honestly, seeing that it's it costs just a black, it's a zombie, and it pings something like that's that's yeah. that's useful. Yeah, it's, it could... it's not like if it comes down to it, I might pick a better card. But if I need something to throw in the ninety nine, like that's uh, look, it's man. Usable. Uh, one mana zombie that has incidental effect that's got yeah. the ability for you to recur it in a zombie deck is pretty yeah. solid. It's not yeah. the greatest deck. It's not going to be like, it's not the first card you put in your deck, but right. it will do a job really, really well. <laughs> I wonder if it's the 98th card you put in the deck. Probably. It's the one when you have all the like key pieces for it and you're just like, I just have one spot to fill. Festering Goblin. It's like, look, <laughs> scathe zombies, Festering Goblin. I'll take Festering right. Goblin. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's, I mean, if it's a choice between scathe zombies or Festering Goblin, then, uh, Or yeah. even Spineless Thug. No, but, but... <laughs> you know what Festering Goblin can do? Kill, kill a Spineless Thug. There you go, see? Wow, yeah, we found, found <laughs> we a We are for... so good at Commander. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, how about that? Um, I feel I can see your face turning red from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. uh, I just like this card a lot. I'm not gonna lie. No, it's a it's a pretty fun it's card. It's fun. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute. This is the first time I've ever seen it. It's not. It's not gonna win any awards anytime soon. It's not. But it's a utility card. It does the job. Sometimes you just need a utility yeah. card that does the job. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, this, truthfully, it does take out something like your opponent's blood artist, or, and if you have a sack yeah. engine going, you don't want that to happen. So, um, yeah, I guess there, I mean, there are, there are definitely worse cards, and like we've already talked about one of them on this show. So, yeah. That's <clears throat> fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. Um, right. This was uh, another test of the emergency commander and system. We, uh, I, I did manage to make that uh, the image capture work so that um, people who are watching the stream and people who watch this on YouTube later can actually see the cards pop up. And I made sure it covered me because this way you didn't see me like scrambling for URLs and stuff. Um, besides, you know, you don't want to see me. You want to see Shivam and Olivia. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, so Andy Bentley says also it be a zombie. So reanimation exactly. strategies. So um, I just had to read it as it be a zombie. Um, uh, viewers and listeners, thank you for joining us and sticking it out this long. You folks rock. Thanks for hanging out with us because it was a blast. And uh, sooner or later, we'll get this uh, streaming uh, stuff. It'll be rote. And we won't have to struggle with all sorts of technology. Um, and uh, if you have any advice for Olivia on what she can do to it's tame Discord. Discord. Yeah, that's crazy. That's like twice now Discord has uh, decided to destroy you. And it's only as soon as we start recording because we had our entire conversation ahead of time. Zero issue. Indeed. Yep, we did all sorts of setup, and uh, it was also fine. it's amazing that your phone is just like immortal, cruising it. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good uh, signal. Maybe we'll all do it from phones. No, we won't. Just not um, <laughs> so if you like what you just saw, even with us uh, vamping while Olivia was gone, head on over that's to Patreon.com. 
uh, slash commander at MTG or commander at MTG.com, right? Um, yeah, commander at MTG.com slash donations or even our GoFundMe and you search for commander at MTG and use the one with the C logo because our smiling co-host Sean, former co-host Sean, is not, uh, uh, is not the right one. And a special thanks to all of our patrons, many of whom are with us right now in our chat. This is so awesome to see you folks here. Um, please come join us. I know that it's late for those of you on the East Coast, but it's just so much fun to interact with you. And as we get better at this, we'll actually interact a lot more. So, um, And without your continued support, of course, we couldn't do this. Actually couldn't do this because this camera that I'm looking into is named Bentley. Um <laughs> So, Olivia, um, oh. how can people yeah. reach you? I'm sorry? How can people reach you? Plus, don't forget, we're going to do the uh, the outro. I know. I, I'm trying to think of a line already. That's the part that I thought you were getting me for. And I was like, yeah. No, first we distract you with uh, how people can reach <laughs> you. Dang it. Um, they can reach me on Twitter. It's best at G-O-B-E-R-T-H-I-C-K-S. And, um, yeah, just... Find me there. One spot I'm always on. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually we can find you on Twitter engaged in conversation with uh, Tappy Toe Claws. Indeed. (laughs) Yeah. Watching you two uh, is, uh, you're you're usually awake before I am, and she certainly is, because she's East Coast, right? Uh, Central time, I think. She's like Milwaukee. But it's fun uh, waking up and I, I put the phone in front of my eyes. I open it up, and there's some loud tweet conversation between you and uh, Sydney. It's usually in all caps. So I yeah. <laughs> we yep. transmit decibels on all frequencies. <laughs> um, and uh, so you can find us on all the social medias by looking for Commander and MTG. We're mostly on Twitter. Uh, we do occasionally check Facebook, but we have uh, largely moved on to Twitter. Um, and uh, Shivam, you are Girapuri Gears on Twitter, right? I am, in fact. Yeah. Do you want to spell that for our uh, oh. listeners? Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, like Dipala back here, uh, I am at Girapuri Gears, which is G H I R A P U R I G E A R S, at twitter.com. And that's where you can find all of my hot takes on Commander, Commander, and the CAG. And once again, if you have any questions for the Rules Committee or thoughts, suggestions, things that should be banned, uh, go ahead and ping them my way, and uh, I will make sure the people who need to see them do. Wow. Did he robot for you, Olivia? No, I heard it all. Oh, it must be my machine. Gosh darn it. Um, Yep, and uh, on Twitter, of course, we are at Commander at MTG, and uh, my uh, individually on Twitter, I'm at Ketjak, which is K-E-T. J A K, which is a crazy name. And uh, then uh, those of you who are listening will now hear a bunch of other information. But those of you who aren't will just get to hear Olivia take us out. So, Olivia? Commander in. Oh, I was going to. I was doing it. (laughs) Your fault this time, Phil. Yes. (laughs) Commander in. Can you not? <laughs> did you take us out i mi- i miss it you broke up yes oh. i did i'll do it a third time yeah do it a third time and now i'm gonna shut up <laughs> okay commander in can you not can you not <laughs> bow i like it Wow. I like it. See, I thought you were responding directly to something me and Phil were doing. Is, That's what I thought it was, which too. Which makes it doubly hilarious. There on my wall, I saw it and I was like, oh, can you not? Like, Oh, I love it. I love it. it. It's fantastic. Can you not? Wow. So now you have wow. it like four times. Our Twitch seers, our Twitch viewers have it like 16 times. Yeah. Love you guys. <laughs> Wow, so there you have it, everybody. Uh, and now you can pick the best one out of the audio, so it works out great. <laughs> Commander and can we not? Yep, a rogue artificer, <laughs> which is his code name. Um, rogue artificer likes your uh, improvisation there, so. Hey. Nice work. All right, well, thanks for sticking with us, everybody. We'll see you uh, next time. <laughs> <laughs>